Hey there, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's sesh, I'll be talking about what I look for specifically when I collect comic books. Hey there again, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. In today's episode, I wanted to take a little bit of a look at how and what I collect in terms of what's out there, right? So you'll see things at face value from, from what you see on the cover, but then there are other things that you may not necessarily notice that I necessarily did not notice when I first came back into comic collecting. So a lot of people call these things variants, right? So variants mean a lot of things is what I've, I've come to learn. So variants in terms of covers of the comic books means that it's the exact same book inside, but the cover may be different. You have a variant cover, you could have uh, different artists doing different covers, you could have ratio variants. So um, uh, a comic shop would get a certain cover if they bought X amount of books, right? So that's one type of variant. Um, in terms of this episode, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about other types of variants that are not so noticeable. Things that I, I found to, to look for um, once I learned more. And this is a disclaimer. So I for sure do not know all the different types of variants out there. So definitely please add some comments below if, if you have any, um, any advice of what to look for or anything you wanna share with the community itself. So I kind of came into this trying to figure out um, why are certain covers more expensive than others? So one thing could obviously be artist. Other things that um, that I wanted that I wanted to start collecting is based off of um, scarcity of of this type of comic book, right? So there's certain types of books that are are considered um, like the the first thing I'll talk about are um, let's let's say um, price variants, right? So you'll have a normal price variant for the U.S. on the top corner. But then you might have a, a different price variant for uh, ones that are sold in Canada and the ones that are sold in Europe, uh, the pence. So a lot of collectors have prized uh, certain things over another based off of um, volume, how many comic books were there sold in Canada versus U.S. So there are probably a lot less in terms of certain books. So a lot of people value those more. So some of the things that I, I've come to look for are if things cost 65 cents here and most of them are 65, I'll look for that 75% sticker or 75 cent sticker. So outside of this, there, there, there's something that, that I really look for now. So this is what I call, um, this is what the community calls newsstand and direct, right? So you could see the barcode on the bottom of the front cover. There are certain books that'll say direct and some that'll just be the barcode and it'll be considered newsstand, right? So certain books that were sold to, let's say a 7-Eleven, a convenience store, or a, a, a non-comic book store, um, were given this, this type of barcode, right? So all of the other books were sold direct to the comic book store. And obviously in the comic book store, the, the comic book owner would take care of the book because he's selling to people that will will buy and collect and um, kind of keep them. Um, in terms of the ones that went to like 7-Eleven or convenience stores, sometimes you might have people coming in rummaging through them. So actually there are a lot less higher grade comics um, that are, that are um, newsstand. So a lot of people have started to value those a lot more. So I've, I myself have seen people where Let's say you have um, like a 9.6 um, direct and a 9.4 newsstand. Some people will actually value the, the 9.4 newsstand higher than, um, than the actual direct book because there are actually less newsstand copies out there. So those are, those are two of the things that I kind of look for, price variance as well as um, newsstand. So outside of this, there, there are a couple things that I actually wanted to, and I don't have these yet, right, is it's what's called um, a Mark Jewelers. And uh, yeah, definitely I'm wearing my Mark Jewelers shirt, got this from Comic Tom, and it, it definitely has the gem mint blue. So this, this comic book insert essentially is um, a four-page cardboard that was stapled to the centerpiece of, 
of certain comic books that were sold near army bases, right? So it's called the Mark Jewelers variant because these four cardboard pages essentially were advertisements for, for selling um, jewelry or rings or watches. So people at the army base could buy them and have these um, pieces of jewelry sent home to their significant others. So I think one of the things that a lot of people value in these books is that because these books were near army bases and they weren't kind of like, you know, saved for, for collecting and, and long term, um, because some people would read them and then just kind of trash them or get rid of them. And the, the handling wasn't as um, um, specific as, as like a lot of comic book shop um, patrons would have for their books. So you don't find as many of these um, Mark Jeweler variants. But one piece of advice that was given to me, and I definitely want to share with you all, is that let's say you're at a comic um, convention or you're at a, um, a comic show. And then you're kind of piecing through um, all of the all of the long boxes. One of the things that is that was told to me is that if you actually look down at the top of that comic book, um, there's a there's since it's very thick cardboard, you could actually see it kind of stick up past like where the pages of the comic are, and so you could essentially see oh this is not the front or back cover, this is definitely like a piece of cardboard in the middle of the comic book. So. That is a that could be a Mark Jeweler. So, you know, kind of just like like piecing through and looking for that little piece of cardboard. I unfortunately have not found one yet during my my comic hunting, but this is definitely one of the things that I want I want to find, just because I think it has a little bit of it'll probably have a little bit of history to it, a little bit of um, nostalgia for some folks of of where it was sold. So um, those are the things that I'm kind of looking for right now, right? So first we have price variants. Then we have um, newsstand, and now we have Mark Jewelers, right? The the fourth thing that I'm I'm kind of keen in finding essentially is are trying to find these print errors, right? So either the cover print errors or the interior um, print errors. Maybe this is um, during the printing process. Uh, one of the colors was swapped, and then they they couldn't figure out like um, to swap them back until a couple of them were printed already. Uh, so a good example of this that was, um, you know, brought up um, by by Reggie Collects and some of the others in the community are Secret Wars number one. So in Secret Wars number one, there's actually a a blue Galactus in there. So you know he, how he's supposed to be that kind of purplish uh, pink color. There's a couple of issues out there that that have this um, blue Galactus. So that's one of the things that I'm kind of looking for too. Outside of this, so these are the four different types of, of variants, I guess you could call them, uh, in terms of books that I'm looking for. But other non-comic book, books that I also collect that are, are not necessarily considered these types of variants are two things, right? So I actually also collect um, ash cans. So these are um, not normal sized books. Um, I've read the history behind these. These ash cans essentially were supposed to be one pagers where publishers could like draw their, for legal purposes, draw their character and then write their um, publisher name on it. Ha legally have that publisher like say that they're the first person printing this character and then they would toss it. So I guess that's how they got the term ash can. But now it's kind of being um, pulled in to other types of books, right? So these are books like... Um, that are weird size, like smaller size, large size, one or two pages. So um, I recently got an ash can, fortunately, from one of my LCSs, and um, it's it's the last Ronin. So it's it's one of those two page um, two page books where you know it's it's kind of nice to have because it's like this first sneak peek at this character. Lastly, one of the things that I really like collecting. I'm not sure if if m many other people many other people do. Maybe um. My friend Hydro Collectibles um, also collects these. Are these are Mighty World of Marvel um, UK Marvel reprints of of Marvel stories? So I found out these reprints came out in about 1972. They came out monthly. So these were reprints of you know early on stories of Marvel, right? So Amazing Fantasy 15. You have um, Fantastic Four number one, Hulk number one as reprints. And then it's it's such a weird size. It's kind of like a magazine size book. So this magazine size book, 
you don't get the cover that that we get here in the U.S. where it's kind of that glossy paper. It's actually newspaper. So I think like as I page through them and I read them, I was like, this is this is just like reading a newspaper. So I, I know it's kind of that four color print. So it it had those like、um, very basic colors where、um, you know the whole page was like green and black in some of them. So I'll I'll, sh- I'll show some pictures here, but. They were very, very fun to read, page through, and it it definitely gives you that、um, silver age smell in terms of of books because it is that newspaper print.、Um, I really love these、um, uh, not normal size comic books and and reprint. So, so those are a couple of the things that I've come to add into my collection in terms of books that are not part of the norm, but. I found them interesting enough to want to have them in my collection. There's no bin necessarily that fits these. I kind of have the. I kind of need to have them not like you know,、um, fitting in my normal short boxes or, or long boxes. But、um, I do store these. I, I. It's you do have to find these magazine t- style sleeves and all this good stuff to to save them. But.、Um, Yeah, this has been a pretty fun journey thus far. There are so many different types of books outside of the normal storylines, the normal books that people collect, and this is kind of the this is kind of the one thing obscure thing I guess that、um, I like to also include in my comic book collecting. So, I guess outside of like yeah the cover variants、um, in terms of price variants,、uh, newsstand、um, interior variants like、um, print errors. Or Mark Jewelers, and then the two things that I like:、um, Ashcan Books as well as Mighty World of Marvel、um, UK Marvel reprint books. These are the things that I like to collect. So I think what I want to ask you all is: outside of the normal book and cover variant, what are the things that you guys like、um, looking for that you like to add to your collection? Like anytime you see it, you're like. Oh, I really need to take a look at this to see if I want to include this in my collection. So, it, it, it's very fun to 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 look at these things when when you kind of go through when you go through your collection. So, yeah, please tell me a little bit about your collection and what you like collecting. So, also please don't forget to、uh, like and subscribe and turn on notifications for for this video if you like this content. And、uh, I'll definitely be pulling up a little bit more about. My collection and、um, trying to see how it compares to yours. So,、um, I guess what I could say to to close things off here is, from my comic journey to yours, make it your own. Thanks all. Bye.